everyone. My name is Diego Sifuentes Koch. I am an otorhinolaryngologist in here in Cordoba. And for me, it's an honor to be here talking about the APLs in the ears. Before I start, I want to remember that the hearing is the sense with which we can perceive the sound around us. Also, it led us to, uh, uh, sorry, to hear the, the people around us and also can communicate with others. World Health Organization says that 5% of the people in the, the world population suffers some kind of hearing impairment. So this kind of investigation would let us to have better treatment for our patients. So when we talk about antifospholipid antibodies in otology, we can uh, talk about two different diseases. One is the sudden sensory nerval hearing loss, and the other one is the immune-mediated inner ear disease. For us, the sudden sensory hearing loss is an ENT emergency that occurs when we lost at least 30 volumes in three frequencies consecutive, at least in less than three days. Generally, there is a unilateral presentation about this. The incidence is estimated between 2 to 20 percent people per year, and it's only estimated because we have a special condition that this is a spontaneous recovery. So we don't know the exact incidence of this pathology. Only in 10 to 15 percent of the sudden loose hearing, we can find a specific cause of this. So we also can call it idiopathic sudden sensory neural hearing loss. When we try to find the main etiopathological findings in this sudden sensory hearing loss, we can talk about viral infections, we can talk about vascular alteration, and also we can talk about labyrinth membrane uh, ruptures that will mix the endolymphatic liquid with the perilymphatic liquid. So, although the, um, although the pathogenesis of this disease remains unclear, we, our group of study, and also many studies, think that the inflammation inside the inner ear will make the, the damage inside the ear. Vascular process for us are the main important process that, that have the lost hearing. That's why, because we, have, we can find acute presentation of the blockage of the vessel inside the inner ear, and when, I get a, when we get the reperfusion of the vessel, we can get some uh, spontaneous recovery. Then, otherwise, if we don't reperfuse, reperfuse the vessel, we are not going to have the, um, the blood vessel in the, in the inner ear, and we are going to have start the inflammatory reaction. When we diagnostic and treat this patient, it's important to run some laboratory test and MRI. MRI will uh, discharge an APC tumor, and the blood tests are important because since 1950s, there was associated between the autoimmune disease and the, uh, the sudden sensory hearing loss. The first one who described the association between a sudden uh, hearing loss with the presence of anterocardiolipine was Hisachi in 1996, 1996, and he found in three patients, three female patients, this association. Then Maudi was the first who associated the, the, the higher levels if, of antibio, um, antibi antibodies in comparison with healthy population. He found that the, the 20 25% of the people with sudden uh, loose hearing present an elevation of these um, antibodies. As in skin and also in renal manifestations, in ear we can find that the disturb of the microcirculation of the inner ear will cause thrombosis inside the inner ear and it could develop the sudden sensory hearing loss in these patients. When we talk about specifically about these uh, antibodies, we're going to find in between 12 to 13 percent of the people with sudden loose hearing, elevation in anticardiolipins antibody. Toby was the first who described that in 51 uh, patients with sudden loose hearing, uh, 16 
present elevation of the antiocardiolipines. Then, uh, 12 weeks later, he retested the patient, and, uh, and seven still have it, uh, an, an, a positive value of antiocardiolipines. So, in this case, he thought that a viral infection could uh, in, uh, could get um, the um, in, get a higher titles of anticardiolipines in these patients. Then when we talk about anti-beta glycoprotein type 1, we found that in 6, 6 to 12 percent of the people are with a sudden hearing loss uh, can, find, can be fine. Toby also in the same studies found that 6, part, six uh, patients uh, has a positive anti-beta glycoprotein type 1. And then 12 uh, weeks later, he found the same values in four people. So in this case, he thought that these antibodies could be more specifically associated to thrombosis in the inner ear. When we talk about lupus anticoagulant, it's reported to be present in 25% of the people with sudden loose hearing. Recently, RIERA described that the association between lupus anticoagulant and um, ACL anti antibodies will be in equal propor uh, proportions. So, uh, we can so in this patient, we can find that if we have two positive values, the recovery will be less than if we can find one or no um, antibodies. When we try to associate the antibodies with the inner ear pathologies, we don't find any association between uh, the presence of anticardiolipins antibodies, anti-2 beta glycoprotein antibodies, or the combinations in patients with vertigo, in patients with sound loose hearing, depending on the audiogram type, the degrees of the hearing loss, the main of the gain of after the treatment, or the kind of, of the recovery uh, by the seal classification. So when we try to define if we can say that in sudden loose hearing we can um, define a, an anti-syndrome fofolipid, we can not fulfill the criteria because in the, with the um, Sydney criteria, we need a basal, a thrombosis in the basal. We, we can find it in the inner ear. We can find uh, positive uh, values in the laboratory, but we can't find an image that will assegurate that this is the cause of the hearing loss. The treatment of the sensory sudden loss hearing aims to recover the auditory third holes. Usually we use corticoids, high dose of corticoids to treatment. That's only the ones that have a valid scientific evidence. But we can also find uh, the use of vasodilatators, diuretics, or also oxygen hyperbaric. But what, do, what as an ENT, what do you have to do in patients with positive antiphospholipid values and sense, sudden sensory hearing loss? We must refer to rheumatologists because we need to start anticoagulation therapy. Uh, also, we must um, stratificate the patient to if, if it will need some uh, anti-aggression prophylaxis after the uh, event. So as a resume, when we try to uh, analyze the sensory hearing loss with the antifospholipid syndrome, we thought that the antibodies react with the endothelium in the inner ear. The damage in the inner ear will get some upregulation that will start uh, with local microthrombus inside the inner ear. And that microthrombus will blockage the inner ear vessels and, I will, and the ear will suffer the sudden loose hearing. By the other way, the immune mediated inner ear disease, it's a disease that is bilateral. It presents a sudden loose hearing, progressive and asymmetrical, in less than three months. The first person who described this was McGave in 1979, who found a group of patients with uh, asymmetric loss hearing that was treated with corticoids with a partial recovery. Now we know that 70% of the cases of 
sudden loss here in asymmetrical are related with systemic autoimmune disease. In this case, we're specifically talking about uh, antiphospholipid antibodies. So this could be one of the mechanisms that we are going to have to loss the hearing. The incidence of the immune mediate in ear disease, it's very low. It's below five, five patients per 100,000 people. And it's below 1% of the total causes of sudden loose hearing. When we in the clinic define these patients, we must have a patient with a rapid progressive sudden loose hearing between three to 30 days. It must be bilateral and it must respond to a steroid or immunosuppressive therapy. This patient must have also, the half of the patient will have also vertigo, tinnitus, and a full fullness um, aural sensation. That's because uh, these kind of patients will be, uh, hard, they will be hard to make that diagnosis for us because there are a lot of ENT diseases that has the same uh, symptoms. Also, this is prevalent in women between the third and the sixth decade. The physiopathogenic of this disease also remains clear. We thought that the endolymphatic sac, it's between the utricle and the sacul, has to be the primary um, organ that is involved in this. The autoimmune antibodies will go to this, to this space to get some uh, blood vessels and it will start the hearing loss. This kind of patient must be treated between the rheumatologist and the ENT with high doses of corticoids, and the 70% of the patient will respond correctly. Then we have a group of patients between 15 and 30% of patients will be, will be need a, a treatment with immunosuppressors or biological agents. As a conclusion, when we saw antibodies, uh, antifospholipid antibodies, in this case of patients, we can think that they are, they are involved in some ways of a pathogenesis of the sudden loss hearing, presumably by the formation of microthrombus in the inner ear of the ear. So, thanks.